It was a story that had its roots in the Mafia's continuing indecision as to whether to get involved in the heroin trade. Joe Valacci was a mobster with the Genovese crime family, a 30-year veteran of organized crime. Valacci had a, you know, a sixth grade education. I think he committed his first crime when he was about six or seven years old, <laughs> broke into a grocery store, in and out of jail. But he had, you know, he had street smarts. Joe Valacci was a low-scale, knuckle-dragging hood who was never going to be any more than a soldier. He was never going to make the really big money. In 1962, he was in Atlanta jail, serving a prison sentence for drug dealing. He feared that his bosses were going to kill him there, for officially, the mob was still opposed to drugs. Balacci acted first, murdering an inmate he believed had been ordered to kill him. It was the wrong man. Whether through fear or remorse, Balacci broke and decided to turn government witness. Now, the original idea was that he would become an informant for the Federal Bureau of Narcotics and tell them about other dope dealers. That's all the, the Bureau wanted to know, other dope dealers. That's their job. But Robert Kennedy had a brighter idea. He said, wait a minute. Let's talk to him about the Mafia. It was the first crack in the Mafia's code of silence. William Hundley was one of the first to hear his revelations. As soon as we got the story, I mean, we moved him. We moved him up to Fort Dix, uh, flew him up there in a helicopter. The, the brig up there was empty. And we put him in the, in the brig. We started interviewing him. Balachi detailed the structure of the Mafia families, from his level as a soldier to the very top, the Godfathers. But this information was never given by him in any criminal trials. Instead, Robert Kennedy turned to television, which was covering the sessions of the McClellan Committee. Bobby Kennedy had the brilliant idea, let's put Joe Valachi on show. Joe Valachi gets before the Senate Committee, and a national audience is absolutely fascinated. The nation's underworld gets the unwelcome spotlight of publicity as the Senate's investigation subcommittee begins new hearings on crime. Arkansas Senator McClelland is at the helm. William Hundley was present as Valachi's electrifying testimony was broadcast across the nation. He really didn't want to cooperate. There's no doubt about that. Uh, quite frankly, though, when he got in front of those Klieg lights up before the McClellan committee, he, uh, you know, the adrenaline started to flow, and I, I think he, you know, <laughs> sort of a perverse way that he kind of enjoyed it. Why did you decide to kill him at that time at that spot? Because he's the guy I spotted at that time. He was the, he In was other the... words, I, I felt that was my last day. In plain English, uh, Senator, I felt that was my last day. In other words, this was a defense for you. You thought that if you, if you kill this man, who you thought was going to kill you anyway, that this... I got some satisfaction, Senator. Put it you got way. some satisfaction. Yeah. Balach's testimony caused a sensation. Here, live on TV, was a mobster giving the first tantalizing glimpse into the secret world of the Mafia, or, as he called it, Cosa Nostra, Italian for our thing. Valachi corroborated what the FBI bugs had begun to pick up and what its director, J. Edgar Hoover, had reluctantly started to believe. That a modern American criminal group used rituals and symbols from Sicily to maintain internal discipline and run its multi-million dollar enterprise. While you were repeating yeah. the words, you were burning this, the paper. Right, this is the way I burn if I expose this organization. There's always a lot of skepticism about that, you know, that, uh, I mean, because nobody had ever come forward and, uh, you know, said, how are you getting made and whatnot. And apparently, you know, it was exactly the way he said it was. Uh, you know, they decide who's going to get made, you get together, you burn this 
for this holy picture and whatnot, and then bingo, you're, you're a made member of the mafia. He went on to explain that you lived by the gun and by the knife, and you died by the gun and by the knife. Who was chosen? Who became your godfather? Joe Banana. Joe Banana? It happened to be now, my where godfather. where is he? Is he on this uh, chart we have here? Is he uh, at the head of one of the families now? Yeah, he still is. He still is? Yeah. He's still alive? Right. For the American Mafia, and the Bonanno family in particular, Valachi's TV appearances were devastating. Valachi's testimony was certainly a blow uh, to, uh, to the people in our world. Uh, there's no, no question about that. Senator, can I, can I say something, Senator? Yeah. Uh, as to what I'm telling you now, I need to go no further to say nothing else. This is what I'm telling you, what I'm exposing to you and the press and everybody. This is my doom. Joe Valachi died in prison of cancer in 1971. He had helped shatter the view that there was no national criminal organization in the United States. Cosa Nostra could no longer act in secret at a time when they were moving more and more onto the international stage with their Sicilian cousins. For both mafias, once broken, Omerta, the vow of silence, could never be as strong again.